All right. Thank you, John. Okay, it seems like uh, everyone can hear me, so let's just get this thing started. My name is Ty Thomas. I'm one of the guys here at Shark Indicators, uh, primarily handling the uh, marketing and business development. So as many of you know, um, we are the makers of a product called Bloodhound, uh, which basically lets you build and backtest and execute any system you can think of, right? So many of our industry partners create their own trading strategies using this platform, which in turn allows you to trade them and enhance and tweak them, uh, making them your own systems when it's all said and done. So what we do is we select uh, top Ninja Trader partners to bring you a lot of variety and exposure to different trading methods and personalities. Uh, and each are very successful in their own right, and each offers unique trading styles. So just a bit of a brief uh, introduction for today's partner, uh, Rob Mitchell. Rob is the president of Axiom Research and Trading, uh, and the mother company to OilTradingRoom.com and also IndicatorSmart.com. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. Um, he's been the largest e-mini S&P trader in the world at times, and has even won the prestigious Robbins World Cup e-mini trading championship. So you know he's been a trading system developer for over two decades, and is a certified NLP trainer as well as a board certified hypnotherapist and timeline therapist. And on top of all that. He's a proven trading educator, presenter, and mentor, uh, just helping others to achieve uh, their goals and dreams as traders. So without any further ado, I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to Rob Mitchell. Thanks, Ty. Thank you for that uh, introduction. And thanks, guys, for coming in today to be part of this webinar. It's going to be fun. Um, today's webinar is going to be different than, uh, now I don't know which screen I'm sharing. Let me check that. Monitor one. Hey, Rob, we can see the uh, Smart Trend order flow, the nodes screen right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me just find the, I think this is uh, the monitor that we want right here. So hopefully uh, you guys are seeing the, uh, just the splash screen there for this presentation. Yep, we're good to go. Perfect. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Ty, for having me in. Thanks to Shark Indicators for having me in. We've got a long relationship with Shark Indicators. When Shark first came to me, um, they came to me and asked me if I could build a trading system in Bloodhound, and um, I... Uh, I was very intrigued by that, and uh, one thing led to another. And Shark is really uh, Shark Indicators has really become the backbone of a lot of the work that I do. Uh, Bloodhound is an incredible tool, and uh, so I thought for today's uh, presentation we would have a really good time by doing a trading system in uh, in Bloodhound, just piece by piece. Now um, I'll tell you over the years. Um, uh, as Ty said, I've been, actually it's been about 27 years I've been developing trading systems and when I first started doing that there wasn't really any software to do it. In fact, uh, kind of, uh, you know, just kind of looking back over that time, I, I built my first trading system in a Borland Paradox database using data I was pulling from Prodigy Network. Some of you that are a little older probably remember what that is. and. Um, and I was downloading that data and analyzing it and looking for patterns in the in the data and that was uh, before you really had these kinds of tools uh, to do uh, uh, system development and so but bloodhound uh, so you know that one thing led to another with that and um, and then uh, the guys at uh, shark uh, reached out to me and and uh, started developing some systems using uh, using Bloodhound. I could talk about systems all day long, and so uh, I'm going to cover a bit of the theory uh, as we build the system together and discuss the indicators that we're using to do it and the kind of theory behind it and what are some of the things that you might want to watch out for when you're building a system. And then at the end of the uh, webinar, you can get the, uh, the template and uh, so you'll be able to review that on your own. 
Uh, so um, I like to, I know we already did it, but just guys, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. There's a risk of loss trading futures. You know, I'll tell you uh, over the years, trading systems uh, can come and go. And uh, I've been trading in crude oil pretty much exclusively for the last three years now. And I have seen that market change its personality about five times, five times in three years. So 36 months, five times, you know. Um, it gives you a feel. Um, uh, systems change up. And, uh, and some of the theories that I could talk to you about about system development are just building the systems to be very, very simple. Some of the best uh, systems ever that I ever developed, for example, the very first system that I made a, a lot of money uh, trading with uh, was um, just basically two lines of code, one to buy, one to sell, and then there were a couple of lines for the stop, and that's how simple it was. I have a, a, a number, I've had the wonderful opportunity of being able to work with some really top money managers and uh, when it comes down to it, the systems that they're using, at least on any individual component level, are always very, very simple. In fact, I have a friend who I've known uh, for about 17 years now, a great trader, and um, his systems are just made out of moving averages, but using them in such a way that other traders uh, wouldn't normally use them. And so, um, but this, you know, when I see his code, uh, sometimes I'm just astounded at how uh, how simple that is. So this is the system that we're going to build today from scratch. Uh, and so if you're learning to do a little bit of coding in Bloodhound, uh, I'm hoping that uh, there will be a few a uh, few things that you might learn doing that. It's called the Smart Trend Order Flow System. And so what we're doing with this system is we are uh, combining um, the idea of trading with a trend. Um, but we're going to combine that with a um, type of an order flow measurement or analysis to keep it from getting chopped up, because uh, this is the uh, this is the pitfall of a trend system. Often uh, is that um, the win percentage can be low with a trend system, and um, and but the average winner is much larger than the average loser. In fact, the uh, I've seen systems that were as low as 15 or 20 percent uh, winning trades that were still highly profitable, and so. But uh, that's why a lot of trading systems are put together as portfolios of um, different markets. So you know, you might be trading in the ES, you might be trading live cattle, you might be trading some in crude oil, you might be trading some Japanese yen, this kind of thing. Uh, often uh, guys will do that across 20 different commodities, and that'll create a certain profile for uh, for a trading system when you, you you take a simple system that's just based on moving averages and you uh, trade it across 20 markets. One of the nice things about a pure trend system is it will never miss a large move. And so uh, for that reason, uh, trend systems have a certain uh, advantage. So I'm going to take this, uh, uh, I'm going to just Build in um, in uh, Ninja Trader. We're just going to build the chart that we're going to use, and so I'm just going to uh, open a chart here, and I'm going to choose crude oil. We could do the ES also, but I'm familiar with crude oil. We're going to use a volume chart, and I'm just going to uh, open that up. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat this because it's going to put that background. So I'm going to load. I'm going to load the template that I created for today for you guys, and, um, and take this off of here and um, I'll make that right margin a little bit smaller, just 25 ticks for that, 25. And so uh, what I've done here, I'm just going to go ahead and add these for you so you can see how I do this. So um, we're going to use, one of the indicators that we're going to use is called the Smart Trend System. What I discovered, and this goes back to uh, the uh, Market Wizards book. There was a, a guy in there, and I don't remember his name offhand, and I apologize to him for that, but because it was decades and decades ago. But um, he cr was trading uh, in markets with the most simple concept, and the simple concept was: if today is up, tomorrow will also be up, and if 
today is down, tomorrow will also be down. And he was just raking it in with a simple system like that. So when you see bar persistency, uh, one bar predicts the other, and that's called autocorrelation when a market's correlated to itself. An update today predicts an update tomorrow, predicts an update the next day. And so I created the smart trend system uh, based on this concept. And basically what it does is it colors the bars. Now, in the futures markets and in markets these days, you can't get away with doing what he had done 30 years ago because the markets are a little bit more random now. But by filtering the bars themselves, you can start making serial predictions about the color. So I started applying this kind of concept with filtering um, to the market. And uh, what I found was that I could predict within the system the color of the next bar with about an 87% probability. The color of the next bar with about an 87% uh, probability. So you can see um, these uh, bars are colored by this trend system. And so um, that's called the smart trend system. And so I can just add that. Actually, let me just do that uh, from scratch for you. I'm just going to do it from scratch. So let's let's do that um, anyway from scratch. I just didn't appreciate that chart entirely. So we'll do crude oil. We'll add this here. We're going to uh, use a 3,000 volume chart, and then we're going to add the smart trend system to it. And so uh, smart trend. Um, or, and we call that the smart color bars. So uh, we're going to add that to the chart. And I'm going to run this uh, at a period of 8. Okay, And that's going to color the bars. I'm going to change the, uh, the background color on the chart. I thought I had, uh, I had done this because I want you guys to be able to see it a little bit better. And so I'm going to change. Is that in properties, I think? Sometimes I forget. And so we're going to change the background to black. And just uh, change the background to black. And uh, let's see how that looks. Yeah, we'll take the grid off. And then we'll uh, go put the tails back on our bars so, so we can see that, okay? So bear with me for a minute while I do that. And I'll just make those white. And then the, I thought I had set this up the other day so all this was done, but for some reason it's doing this. So that uh, gives us a chart, and we've got the uh, trend system applied. And so when the bar changes color, we expect uh, bars to follow. Um, about 87% of the time or so to be the same color. And so this can help you to get caught in, um, in pretty decent trends. And so the next uh, uh, thing is that sometimes the market will change direction, and uh, particularly when the market's moving sideways over a period of time, and uh, that's when trend systems get chopped up because a trend system is looking for the market to depart away from uh, a certain area. And so you, a lot of times with this system, I found that uh, we get momentum. In other words, when you get a, uh, when you get a bar that changes color, uh, very often you get um, some follow through with that, particularly when it goes with the trend. And so uh, you get a, a reversal bar here. We seem to have lost our time scale here. Let me see if I can fix that. That's why I didn't uh, do this. I didn't really want to do this because I don't usually uh, mess around with these. Uh, I might have to just go with uh, the template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these things to the chart, guys, so that um, you can see it. So the next indicator that we're going to use is called the Trap Trader Oscillator. And so I'm going to add that to the chart. 
This is a trap trader oscillator and I'm going to actually use two of those in today's system that we're going to build. And so we're going to add that and then I'm also going to add another one, another trap trader oscillator. You're going to just see how simple the system really is uh, in a minute as we form this up. And I'm going to set this one to look at the net uh, volume as it's occurring. And so we have a volume-based chart that's looking at net volume and another one that's a pro uh, proprietary measure of the order flow. And then we're going to use another indicator. So uh, what do we look for on, on this uh, particular type of an indicator is there, there are different ways that you can look at patterns that go with the trend, but what we're looking for is areas where the market's breaking out of a prior swing area. And so, like for example, when you see uh, this um, uh, making an extension from coast to coast, basically it's going all the way across and it comes back down into here and then reverses again, you know that uh, you're likely to get trend continuation following this break right here. And so, uh, sometimes you'll get this zigzag thing co uh, going down and then you break back out again going up. And so, this uh, particular system uh, is, uh, we call this a lead out when you uh, go through and there's two forms of a lead out. You've got uh, lead outs that occur like this basically. And so you go A, B, C, D and you're breaking through. And then the other one would be uh, uh, where you um, you might go like this like um, and then like this and then uh, come up like that. And so, but in either case, you're breaking below uh, or through a prior level. And so, uh, so what we're going to be looking for is lead outs in order flow that confirm our trend. And so, those are two separate components, and then we're going to do that for each of these. Now, the way that I do that is I don't, uh, the system doesn't have a way of, of knowing that these crosses are happening, and that would be kind of complicated to um, organize that into Bloodhound for coding purposes. So what I did was I created an indicator called the Smart Breakpoints for doing that. And so we're going to apply Smart Breakpoints, and I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how that works. And this, so the Smart Breakpoints is uh, specifically for identifying. There's a couple of things we do with that. One is we can identify divergences with it. And we can also identify uh, breakouts or leadouts with it. And so I'm going to put this in panel two. And I'm going to apply to it the trap trader oscillator. So the way I do that, this is called embedding an indicator. And I'm going to teach you today how to embed an indicator in Bloodhound also. But so what, what I'm doing is I'm feeding into the input. Instead of feeding crude oil into the input, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed into it the trap trader oscillator itself. I hope that's not too, too complicated. And I'm just going to make sure that it's got the same settings on it. And so the trap trader oscillator, this one, is in panel two right there. And so I'm going to apply that to panel two and then hopefully if I haven't made a mistake it's going to line up with that and it's going to draw all those lines on there for those breakpoints that we talked about. So when this goes A, B, C, D and it breaks the line then this line sends uh, information to Bloodhound that tells it that it's broken out. That it's broken out. And so you've got this line right here and so what this uh, indicator of the breakpoints actually does is it feeds to Bloodhound the information of how many lines have been broken. You could tell it to only do this if it had broken two lines, for example. So like, for example, on this one it had broken two lines, but we're not going to get too sophisticated today. We're just going to do it for uh, any break that occurs to confirm the trend. And so, and I can also apply that to uh, this indicator down here, and I'll end up having Um, well, then I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to apply uh, Bloodhound to the chart. 
but we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to apply Bloodhound to the chart, and uh, we're going to get the background colors from Bloodhound for that. Okay. So, um, so in this way, um, we're going to end up basically with this chart with the two oscillators on there, showing the breakpoints on them, and then also uh, the template that we're going to build here in a minute. So I'm going to build the entire system out of the Trap Trader oscillator and smart breakpoints. I'm using the smart breakpoints to identify the patterns on the Trap Trader oscillator. That's these two. And then I'm also going to use the trend system to give me the trend. All right. And so just simple stuff, right? Real simple stuff. Basically just a couple uh, lines of code. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new template and we're going to build this from scratch. And the way I would do that in Bloodhound is I can either click that. I could also get to it by uh, going to the indicator. I could right click the chart and say indicators and go in here to Bloodhound. And I could click this and then that's going to bring that same box up. So it's kind of a shortcut just to uh, do that. And I'm going to say new, and we're going to start with a new template from scratch with Bloodhound applied to the chart. Empty template, no logic. Okay. Empty template, no logic. And so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to click that again, and I'm going to uh, bring this up over here, and we're going to go. Uh, we're going to add some uh, solvers and so the first one that we're going to uh, add is um, is going to uh, be for the uh, smart trend system itself and so for the smart trend system uh, I want to have an indicator comparison I think let me double check that oops I'm clicking the wrong buttons Just bear with me a moment. Where do we go here? Now it's not a comparison that um, I apologize. That is a Um, indicator threshold. There we go. So the smart trend system is uh, designed to output the levels of the trend uh, four different levels. So we're just going to use the stronger uh, the stronger levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, put the smart color bars into here. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, we're going to take the smart color bars and put them in. And we're going to add that to the chart. And you see here it says data series smart color bar signal. So we coded that so that you could easily use this tool to, um, to measure trends without a lot of coding. So it takes all your coding and just reduces it down to this extremely simple uh, kind of thing. So you don't have to do a lot of complicated analysis to get the uh, trend level. And so it's showing you... Um, uh, two different levels of trend strength uh, that you can get out of this. And like I said, we're just going to use the uh, we're just going to use the basic one. And so what that's going to feed into um, is um, we're going to uh, have a threshold of two. That's the stronger one, and then one, and then we're going to have a uh, a one out of two. This is for each side, long and short. And then we're going to go over to the long and short output, and we're just going to uh, tell Bloodhound to paint us um, um, when the level's at uh, greater than two to paint a one, and when it's at one, we're going to say 0.9, but it's going to pick up a couple of those. 
So it's going to do uh, both the uh, strong ones, and then we're going to put in a, a minus 0.9 here and a minus 1 here. And that's going to pick up the other colors. So that's the trend system just on its own. And then I always like to uh, label these. We're going to call that smart trend. And so we basically, uh, with this tool and the way it's coded, we basically just coded up a whole, um, a whole trading system, and we're going to call this uh, shark trend. Okay, we basically just coded up a whole very simple <clears throat> trading system that's essentially predicting the next bar color at a pretty high accuracy rate. You'll get whipsawed a little bit here and there, but I find that these 3K volume bars are only about seven ticks in height on this particular market. If you were doing this in the ES, it would be my suggestion that you use about a 12,000 volume bar, about four times as much. But these uh, these bars in crude oil are about seven uh, seven ticks or so on average. So what's nice about this is uh, when you get nicked, um, the reversal is pretty small. Like for example, just on this system alone, oh, you buy at 49.39 and then you reverse again here at 32. So that's a seven tick loss in in that. So this concept right here where you're getting whipsawed and the size of the bars, so I'm going to segue uh, to another uh, topic here for a minute. The biggest problem with uh, trend systems, as I had alluded to earlier, is when you're getting whipsawed. And so if you can create systems where that whipsaw amount is relatively small, then it opens up the door for you to get caught in some really big trades. And so the losers are small and the winners are bigger. And so that's really what you want to do with that. So a lot of guys in my trading room uh, know and I did this earlier today, so for those of you that are in, in my rooms, I'm just going to uh, paint this for you real quickly. If this is a $0 trade, $0, and your winning trades are over here and your losing trades are over here, in general, what most people's experience in trading is going to be is they're going to have a lot of small um, winning trades, and they're going to have a lot of uh, relatively small losing trades, right? And then the stop's going to be over in here, so that's going to prevent the loss from getting too big over in here. And then what's going to happen is, um, periodically, you're going to get caught in some really big trades. So maybe this is, a say, a $2,000 uh, winner over here, and this is a $1,000 winner over here. This is a $500 winner over here, you know, 250 here, something like that. And then um, over here, the equal distance from, uh, from your average loss size, not your stop size, but your average loss size, the equal distance from there is a, pro uh, a little curvy line right there, approximately right here, right? So if this is, say, $150, let's just say it is, this area right here, all the trading that happens right in here is only going to make up for all the losses that occurred over in here. So this whole area right here, you take all the trades, all the losers, and all the winners, taking all the winners over the same area as the losers, this is just break-even trading. And then what happens is you get caught in these ones that go outside the box. 375, 500, 1,000, 2,000 dollar winners. And so what happens to a lot of guys is um, they're not able to get caught in these trades over on this side of the curve that make up for all the losing trade over on this side. Now, if you can manage to make this loss get smaller and smaller, what happens is you effectively make this box narrower and it opens up more profit. So for every amount that you reduce your uh, losses by, you actually increase your uh, winning side. But that's a whole different uh, animal right there. But uh, 
but basically what we're talking about here on a trend system is creating a situation where you can get over into this side of the experience rather than being caught in this break-even zone. So it doesn't matter really how wide this is. The theory is that in order for you to be a successful trader, it all starts right here. And what's happening is this is the number, as this goes out like this, it's fewer trades. There are fewer trades at, at 2,000 than there are at 1,000. There's more trades at 500. There's more at 250. There's maybe more at $150 winners. And there's going to be a whole bunch of trades where you, know, you lose 100, you make 100, this kind of thing, right? But you've got to get yourself over on this side of the curve. So where a lot of traders really get into trouble is they can't seem to get themselves over here. And so that's why I show you a trend system because this thing's going to help you just to stay in these long protracted moves that are going to get you over into this side of the curve. Okay. So the next thing that we want to add to this system to get some of the noise out of here is we want to and that'll also make these squeezes a little bit better too. So you, uh, you'll you get caught into areas where uh, if it does reverse on you, it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be less. Now there are other ways that we can filter, um, filter a trade. So what are different kinds of trade filters? Well, the most basic trade filter of all is the bar type that you're using. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, a bar type is basically like, doing a sort on a spreadsheet. The bar is dictating what uh, kind of uh, advantage that you can take of the mar market movement. So let's say for example you're using a bar that uh, won't even show you a reversal until it's 20 ticks off of a low or something like that. Well if you're in a market that only trades uh, a range of 50 or 60 ticks in a day for example, that was another uh, drawing, if the system's not capable of telling you that uh, you've triggered until you get to right here and the day's range is only going to go to right here and by the time you know you're getting out you don't know it until here then the maximum amount that you can uh, draw out of that market for that move is, is that amount right there and as the ranges get smaller and smaller uh, the amount that you can take out of the market gets smaller and smaller this is why uh, choppy days can really be the undoing of a of a trader because the market uh, just does not give them the opportunity for the follow through if it takes you this many ticks to figure out that the market's reversed and this many ticks to find out that it's reversed and so you want to arrange your bar type around being able to be meaningful within the ranges that are expected so in crude oil right now I think probably about 80 percent of the days are 70 ticks something like that. Uh, in the ES, uh, the numbers are actually pretty good right now, um, probably um, about 12 ticks on average, something like that. The ranges are actually a little bit bigger right now, but, um, but it's, uh, the, uh, the stock index is a little less consistent. And there's ways of getting around that, but that's a different uh, subject. So, so it's real important to choose a bar that is acting as a filter in such a way that you can take advantage of the range expansion that's occurring within any given day um, and for you to be able to identify that early enough that you can again get over into these kinds of situations over on this side of the curve and so the bar uh, choice is real uh, critical that's one way of filtering another way of filtering that, uh, that we're going to do here aside from just taking on this simple kind of trend system is to add the order flow uh, to our confirmation and so uh, we're going to add that next so what we're going to do is we're going to add to our system the um, the uh, well actually you know what I'd like to add first let's do another one let's add to this system um, let's add to this system a filter uh, for inside bars. We're going to take out, and so for this one we are going to use uh, indicator comparison, 
and I'm going to add that. And this this kind of a, a filter is a very powerful uh, kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a filter where the close is greater than the high of one bar ago, or the close is less than the low of one period ago. Okay. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a feature within uh, Bloodhound that um, called Chameleon. And so the way I do that is I go over here to my indicators and I go down to Shark, SI, Chameleon, and I'm going to add that. And then what I'm going to uh, do on that is I'm going to, we said the close is greater than the high of one bar ago. And so I'm going to use the close for both the long and the short side, okay, for this one. And then on the second one, um, on the second one, let me go take a look at my, on the second one, we're going to do the high and the low. And so uh, that's this one right here. And I'm going to bring in, Chameleon again, SI Chameleon. So what uh, Chameleon is enabling me to do is it's enabling me to actually go in there and grab bar data. I'm going to use the high the high bounds to go long, and I'm going to use the low bounds to go short. I'll put that in there, and then I'm going to use a displacement of one bar ago, or one bar ago, high of one bar ago, low of one bar ago. And then I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say if it's greater or less than, okay? And so I add, I add that in there. Now at this point, we've got two components uh, to the system. And so at this point, we can actually um, make uh, some logic with that. So we're going to build a new, um, new, I'm not going to call that new logic, I'm going to call that, uh, what do I call it, smart trend order flow, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an AND node, so the logic here is basically going to say, I'm going to grab existing nodes. I'm going to grab the smart trend and bring that in here. Existing node and my um, my inside bar filter. And I'm just going to bring those together. Bring those together. And then, now you'll notice that uh, when I do that, I go some reds and I go some greens and I go some reds and I go some greens. So if I don't want the uh, chart to be all spotty like that, I can bring in the toggle. And when I bring in the toggle, it will uh, hold that condition as true. Oops. It'll hold that condition as true, and it'll just solidify that background for me. So we just have a basic system here in Bloodhound using inside bars. If the bar is inside, it won't allow it to trigger. And that keeps us out of choppy kind of stuff. And then the trend system, right? And so the next thing that we're going to uh, add to this is our order flow computations. Now, we talked about uh, that a few minutes ago. We, we were uh, referring to that as leadouts. And what leadouts do is um, they tell us when the order flow that is underlying the market movement, because you could get a large, uh, you could get a large movement in the market without any corresponding order flow, without any corresponding order flow, or you could get a lot of order flow without any uh, bar movement. Right? You have uh, various cases of these. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to clean up some of the uh, faulty trades or whipsaws 
by bringing this order flow component. Now this uh, thing of uh, trap trader oscillator, there's all kinds of systems that you could build out of the trap trader oscillator using lead outs and also using patterns where um, what we call a type two divergent pattern. Uh, you're getting that kind of a pattern right here. This is actually indicative of uh, trend continuation. But for this uh, particular system, because we're doing um, pure trend, uh, we're just using it in a, in a lead out context. And the reason I'm going to bring in both of these computations is I'm going to look for these to be either or, either or. And, um, and that will pick up more uh, possibilities. So uh, let me bring that back up again. And then what we're going to do is, remember how we embedded these uh, trap trader oscillator inside of the smart breakpoints? We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do the same thing here. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring in the breakpoints as an indicator threshold again reason that oh, we can do it as an indicator uh, threshold is because of the way the indicator is coded. So we're going to call this uh, break points points um, and um, so then we're going to bring in here Let me just make sure that we're doing this right. Yeah, so we're going to bring in the breakpoints here. And then we're going to do some embedding. I'm going to bring in the smart breakpoints. This kind of embedding thing where you use one, I've been doing this for uh, decades, where I use indicators to um, essentially, I use them in unconventional ways. So I'm using one indicator to take readings off of another indicator. And I've been uh, doing this for, uh, for years and years. And um, you can come up with a lot of really interesting things when you do that. And so I'm going to take this uh, breakpoints and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed the trap trader oscillator. And the way I'm going to do that in Bloodhound, that's called nesting. And if I don't uh, mess it up, I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to nest it. Okay? I'm going to nest it. And then I'm going to set that to uh, the setting that we were looking for. And for a high cross, we're going to go long. And for a low cross, we're going to go short. And hopefully I have uh, I've gotten that right. Let me just double check and make sure. Uh, the other one is um, we're going to use the average on this one. Okay. And so that's going to bring in our breakpoints uh, for uh, this one on top and bring it in as a component. And so now because the state of the break changes after one bar, I'm going to want to hold that value in place. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a toggle for that so that when it changes state, it's going to hold the value until the next case uh, that occurs. All right. And then, and I don't have to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one and we're going to, uh, we're going to make the other one. All right, so um, let me see if I can. Existing nodes, smart breakpoints. Actually, uh, actually, I'm going to build it from scratch because uh, sometimes uh, Bloodhound will um, not be friendly about that if you ch change the name. So on this one, I'm going to call that break points net. That's just looking at the net volume, and uh, we're going to bring the 
um, smart breakpoints in here. And add it, and then we're going to nest into it the trap trader oscillator again. And we will have the uh, basic nuts and bolts of our system here in just a minute. I'm going to use this. And we're going to use net because this one's for net. And we're going to use high cross uh, for long and low cross for short. We're going to bring in another toggle that's going to keep that holding its state. And then what I want to do is I want to have it so if either of those is leading out, it's going to grab it. So I'm going to grab an OR function on that, and I'm going to OR these together. Okay. Now as we do that, uh, the system's going to get a little bit wider, and so I'm going to bring these out over here. And then I'm going to bring that OR into the AND node. So what I... So basically the logic of the system is saying the following. If the smart trend is going down and it's not an inside bar and you're leading out, you're in a lead out condition on either of the trap trader oscillators, if all those things are true, then go short. Or if the smart trend uh, is going up and it's not an inside bar, um, and you're getting uh, order flow lead out in that direction, uh, then trade in that direction. And it's just that simple. So uh, I need to uh, make sure I got a couple of values in uh, uh, on these breakpoints, and then we should have everything all uh, all in place for us to take a look and see uh, see what we've got. I'm going to put a one here. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other one, point nine. Minus point nine, minus one on that one, and then on the uh, long output, I'm going to go uh, two, and the point nine, I'm going to go one, and on this one, I'm going to go two and one. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this one. Two and one. And then two. Oh, yeah. And then two. Oops, two and one. Part of the uh, reason that I, I mean, I could have just shown this to you, but I, I build it like this because if you're going to learn uh, some of these things, it's nice to be able to follow along. And if I'm not doing it super fast, you don't have to keep, uh, you know, if you're going to go back over the video or, or whatever. So, um, and that uh, helps with the learning. Let me make sure I got these thresholds right. No, I, the thresholds aren't. I hope I got these bottom ones right. Yeah, so the threshold is... Um, one and point nine and minus point nine and minus one. So hopefully we got all that together. And you know, let me just make uh, make double shirt. Now you can see that that whipsaw. I uh, was removed from that because you didn't get any lead out in the order flow. So we can also show that uh, too. This is a nice thing in Bloodhound that you can do. You can go in and disconnect your logic nodes and see the difference. You know, see what kind of uh, benefit this brings to the table for you uh, coming on and off. And of course you want to do it over more data than this. So uh, that's building the system. What are some other uh, things uh, that we could bring to this discussion. So we've got a very basic trend system. But what we're doing is we're holding these things out as individual units. Okay, we've got the trend itself. Then we've got a, an identifier. Well, is the trend inside? Because if it's really trending, you shouldn't really be having an inside bar. That's this one here. 
is the order flow confirming the, the trend in two different ways. And you could go ahead and switch these on or off. I, I debated for a while if I was just going to leave this one out, but I thought, hey, I'll, I'll build it for you and share it with you because uh, this, this kind of logical structure is kind of cool. Right. And so this is, uh, this is the basic system. So, um, so there's two basic kinds of uh, trading that you can do. You can counter trend or you can um, trend trade. Now you could also build a counter trend kind of a system out of these trap trader oscillators when they get to the extremes. Uh, you very often get continuation in those ways. Uh, we've got different kinds of divergences and things um, that we use in our trading rooms and discuss in our trading rooms all the time. And so, but um, but basically, uh, the thing that I like about the trend systems is it forces you into a mode when you're uh, really learning to trade. It forces you into a mode where you can get caught in these. Even if you're trying to stick your foot in your mouth, it's still going to end up happening to you. And you know, you get caught in a one thousand or two thousand dollar trade, and you uh, hold it out. We had uh, one day. Uh, I forgot what day it was in crude oil. Uh, this system was uh, short literally the entire day. It was a 257 tick day. And so, um, and I think uh, it might have had, actually, I, I'm pretty sure it held all day, you know, and so, because you just weren't getting the order flow. So, so uh, what are uh, characteristics? Let me just cover this briefly. Uh, what are some characteristics of a trend system over that of a counter trend system? Well, trend systems can have winning percentages anywhere from, like I said, you know, 15, 20 percent on up to about 50 percent. 50 percent is random. But by doing these kinds of techniques that I've shown you uh, here, you can often get the win percent of the trend system uh, uh, above 50 percent on up into the 60s or even sometimes as high as 70 percent. Uh, what are some characteristics of a counter trend system? Well, often a counter trend system will have a higher win percent, but the a lot of times, you know, above 70 percent, 60, 70, 80 uh, percent, but the average trades are much smaller and you don't tend to get caught over in that, um, that trend-oriented edge of the curve when you're uh, counter trend trading. So uh, when you start to learn to trade, it's often good to start to learn uh, trend trading first and then learn the counter trend trading later. And uh, then there's also some issues with, can I counter trend trade and trend trade at the same time? Can my brain handle that? Because it's two different modes of thinking when you do that. So, um, so a trend system has win percentages often, you know, say 50% on average. 25 is kind of on the low side, you know, to 60% or so, with the average winner being several times the average loser. And then on the counter trend, often you could have win percentages even up into the 90% range, but the average win is 50% of the loser. And so when you lose, you could get nicked for two or three prior trades uh, in that. So. Now, different uh, personality is going to want to trade in uh, in different ways, but you can build a system because of the way these things are coded. Because they put out discrete values about the state of the indicator to Bloodhound, it makes coding super super easy to do. And I'm I'm not uh, I'm not the greatest coder in the world, so I really and that's why there's other indicators that uh, we built that uh, that put out those kinds of states uh, are smart. Uh, MACD is absolutely astounding in the kind of information that it can put out to Bloodhound, for example. So, so I, as you could see, the uh, adding the order flow confirmation kind of cleaned this thing up, and you'll get uh, cases where um, where you get caught in some really big trades. A certain number of trades are going to be smaller scratch type trades, and then. Um, like today, uh, this afternoon was just awesome. I got a couple of little whips right here. So uh, how else could you improve a system like this? Well, you could lay bigger trend because this um, this trend system is only looking at the last eight bars. You could also look at price action patterns. These are ways of filtering. You can filter through the price action pattern. You can filter through, and I'm talking about uh, price structure. We teach that in our trading room. 
uh, you could um, uh, use market profile to understand whether or not the market is um, in a edge playing mode or in a trend playing mode. And we have uh, statistics for supporting that kind of thing. And that kind of thing can help because like this whole rally that came up uh, came up here uh, was uh, had gone through the whole value area. And so when this rally broke out uh, about in here, uh, you knew you pretty much wanted to be on the long side as it went into the end of the day. Uh, these, these kinds of things. Uh, we also have uh, statistics and patterns that we could use to, like for example, we know that 80% of the time, if you take the initial balance period of the first hour of the day, and this is just one of many uh, stats that you could use to uh, help you in targeting. Uh, you know that 80% of the time you're going to go 50% of the uh, first hour's range um, uh, to the upside or to the downside. And that's about an 80% target. And about 100% of that, about 50% of the time. So somewhere between one of those and the other is you go from 80% probability of hitting it to 50% probability of hitting it. So uh, you can actually, uh, using tools like that, determine what kind of a market environment you're in. And then there are range projection statistics. And then we also do some things like market mapping and things like that that can tell us the best time of the day to trade. So I took this system, for example, and I coded it up in uh, crude oil and I ran some tests and the way I run the test is I optimize the time of day that it's trading over and so I actually look at the time of the day it's trading over and I'm looking at the average trade size what happens to the average trade if I'm trading during certain time slots and um, by far in crude oil for example I haven't done this in the ES I just ran uh, some of these tests to discuss for uh, today's webinar but um, in the uh, uh, crude oil, for example, between 7 a.m. Pacific time or 10 a.m. Eastern time and 11.20 Eastern time, uh, the, that is absolutely your best time of the day to, um, to trade uh, for range expansion. And we have other uh, stats. We have a thing that we use called the three-period probability walk table, and that uh, table also reveals that kind of patterning in the data. And then after that, your opportunity literally drops in half. So the average trade that you would expect and the amount of time that you would have to hold in order to get it um, cuts in half. So if you're the kind of trader that needs some uh, immediate price movement now, you know, for example, that's your time of the day to trade. And uh, after that, you're going to have to sit there for an hour and a half to two hours in order to get the same amount that you'd get in that uh, same uh, interval of time. And so those are just different ways of optimizing for time of day and finding out uh, where the best opportunity is uh, at any given time during the day. And so those are some things that you can use to filter a system like this. And so uh, uh, we built the, uh, the system here. I'm going to give you a link uh, to a template for this that you can download. And so if you already own these tools, you can just uh, load, it, uh, load it up and you got it. Um, now, I'll tell you a, a, another thing. Uh, also, um, I ran this, uh, I, I didn't want to do it for today's webinar, but I'm just going to tell you because it's really remarkable. So I, I ran a back test on this. I was going to run some back tests today in NinjaTrader, but for some reason I keep getting this uh, can't write to the cache uh, failure and then uh, Ninja's locking up. So I got to figure out, I was trying to run some optimizations before the webinar today and it, uh, Ninja just wasn't uh, behaving nicely for that. But um, I, I ran some optimizations a couple of days ago on the 3K chart that we have right here in crude oil, for example, uh, the average trade uh, since uh, the 28th of February, so about six weeks or so, I think, a um, couple months, um, is about $70 a trade about seventy dollars on this uh, this exact one that we coded up okay if you run this same system on a thousand ultimate tick bar uh, the average trade is two hundred and nineteen dollars a trade since February 28th 219 
that's a pretty rocking good little system, guys. And so, um, so uh, you're going to get caught in some real nice trades with uh, with either version of uh, of those systems. Um, so, I think I'd already mentioned to you. Uh, just as a basic system, uh, crude oil, you can run this on a, I like the 3K, uh, the 2K, I, I ran different uh, optimizations for you um, on the uh, 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, um, actually up to 5K, uh, 3 to 5K on, uh, on, uh, on this chart uh, is good. Um, I wouldn't go less than 3,000, um, so... Um, but by doing that, you kind of make your own system. Like, you know, if you made the system at, you know, 3250, for example, then nobody else would be uh, probably trading in the same places as you. So that's kind of cool. And um, let me see. Yeah, so I ran some uh, back tests. I gave you some stats on the, on the UTB. Uh, so what's another thing you can do with this? <clears throat> you can use uh, Shark Indicators Raven. Uh, with this uh, quite beautifully, in fact. Um, and you could even go into the code and you could add long and short sides. So you uh, could copy this whole template and redo uh, these uh, each for the long and short side. And then, so your drop down would give you the long and short. We just got this going both, uh, both sides right here. And you could put it in Raven. And so uh, the way you do Raven is you turn off your chart trader and you put strategies on there and then you just bring the same system into uh, Raven and it'll uh, execute for you quite beautifully actually quite beautifully Raven's pretty awesome so strategies oh, let me show that for you and you just put uh, Raven in there and you just load the system in here piece of cake it's beautiful uh, and then you could mess around with some uh, different angles. I just like to keep my trading system super simple because that's how you get caught in those big uh, those big trades. So I got a special that I put together today for you. I got a special for you, and um, I don't know if Ty. If uh, sometimes I don't know how to use a chat on here. I'm gonna uh, just paste the uh, link in there. I think I accidentally pasted it twice, a uh, webinar special, or maybe uh, Ty had put that in there for you. And the other one that I want to go over with you is the, um, yeah, and so that that's that link uh, to uh, Indicator Smart. So let me go over that with you guys, okay? I think uh, GoToWebinar doesn't like it when we uh, get too many of these charts over overlapping and so uh, let me uh, bring this up and just go over this with you briefly now if if this is something that you want to do um, if this is something that you'd like to do um, you got to have bloodhound for that and so what I did was I just put a link in here to get bloodhound if you don't already have it and um, for some reason the uh, uh, webinar or the here we go um, for some reason it's having a little trouble loading so I worked out a real super deal for you on this um, smart breakpoint system and um, so what do you get with this smart trap trader oscillator and describes it here for you Smart breakpoints indicator describes that here for you. The smart trend system describes how that works here. And then uh, I'm going to throw in one month if you decide to get this in the oil trading room to learn to see more of these patterns and learn this in a live trading environment and uh, advance your skill set in that way. So uh, you get the uh, system template for Bloodhound, which I have posted a link to below. I'll get to that in a minute. And the, uh, I made a chart template for you so that uh, these charts, you could just automatically load them as you've seen them in here. And so if you load all these things and you uh, load the Bloodhound template into your templates Bloodhound directory, and then you open up this uh, chart template that there's a link for down here, uh, it'll all just open up the same way that we had it here. Okay. 
there's the uh, uh, chart template right there, and there's the breakpoints um, template for the webinar that we just built today, exactly as we just built. And so if you already have these tools, you can just um, grab uh, that breakpoint system, put it in your templates Bloodhound directory, uh, open this up and save it in your uh, uh, chart templates directory, and then just open it up and you're good to go. Should be good to go. So, but if uh, I don't normally uh, give discounts beyond the normal discount, but I have uh, done that for you today. Uh, this whole package, fifteen ninety nine, and it includes a month in the oil trading room. It's no strings attached. You don't need to uh, give a credit card or anything like that. But after you place your order, just send me an email and say, Rob, uh, can you send me a link for the uh, for the uh, one month free trial in the oil trading room. So that's what I have for you guys. If you have some questions, we've run a little bit over and I kind of suspected that we would because we've covered a lot of ground today. Let me see if that, uh, also if you need to get uh, Bloodhound, um, uh, there's a link for that there. Yeah. And so uh, let me see uh, if it's okay with Ty, maybe um, I wouldn't use this on a Renko. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go over these uh, for a couple of minutes. Yeah, I would definitely not use it. Time. If you're going to use this with a Renko, then you're going to use it almost in a completely inverted way uh, from the way we're describing. And um, if you're interested in learning more about that, join the oil trading room and you will see that uh, happen uh, live uh, right in front of your face every day. How we use the Trap Trader Oscillator on, um, oh, uh, thanks for asking, uh, how you use Trap Trader Oscillator on a, on a Renko bar. D whole different animal. And there, I could get into a lot of theory as to why that's the case. How long is this special good for? I'm going to hold this till Friday. I'm not going to hold it beyond Friday because I don't, um, I don't want to have to monitor it over the weekend, so I'm going to turn it off on Friday. Um, I won't do a one-year back test because there's no way that I would ever run a system, George, um, uh, for that long without uh, retesting and reoptimization. Yeah, um, just no way I'd want to do that. Uh, some people believe that if you run a back test on a lot of data. Um, but uh, after developing systems for decades, I don't believe that to be the case. Uh, what you're going to end up doing if you get a good back test over a year of data, data is you're going to get a highly um, you're going to get a highly crafted thing that's probably not going to be particularly robust for you. Um, I wasn't able to I didn't really have the time today to get into some of the theory behind the uh, trading system. Uh, I do talk about this in the oil trading room. Um, on an ongoing basis is how you make a system out of individual discrete components that are uncorrelated and unrelated. And uh, it's a real important part of system development if you're going to be developing uh, successful trading systems. So uh, the time, uh, John Peter, is um, uh, Eastern time, uh, uh, 10 a.m. to 1120. 10 a.m. to 1120. So, yeah, that same template, Michael, work on the ES, so you're good to go on that. Yeah. Uh, the bonds, actually, uh, the 3K chart in the bonds, um, but due to the $31.25 tick structure uh, um, it and the, and the daily ranges, the way they work within that structure, it's a little bit trickier on that, but I do like the system on the bonds. Uh, money management is, uh, for this system, is just a reversal, just a reversal. It's just simple, simple, simple. Um, but you could go in and mess around with some money management, but you're probably going to see your uh, average trades get smaller, 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 because the system really doesn't need that. Uh, for daily charts, I would definitely design it differently um, entirely. Yeah, I would for sure. Yeah, and that gets into that scaling issue that we talked about. What's your bar uh, range, these kinds of things, and, uh, and uh, what's the expected range expansion? All these kinds of questions come into play in a, in a good system design. You know, I haven't looked at uh, gold, RJ, but you could uh, throw it on there and uh, take a look at it. 
Um, if I said mode, uh, Wayne, I was probably talking about something else, but maybe I did. So thank you. And um, yeah, uh, Rob, my back test isn't working. I did give you some stats on those. Um, uh, Ninja Trade. I tried it two times before the webinar because I was going to do it and it uh, crashed. But um, about 220 bucks a trade on the on the UT and about 70 or so on the on the other. Uh, Fred, uh, thanks for asking. Um, Indicatorsmart.com, and I think I gave the link for that. It'll take you right to that page. And uh, what I did uh, here today was in NinjaTrader 7. Um, we're still working on some things for NinjaTrader 8 uh, to make it work. Yeah, Bloodhound Larry uh, works in NinjaTrader, and it is a system for um, making trading systems in a real easy way. And then I've simplified that even further by the way we've developed our tools. So, <laughs> and I think these uh, these others were from uh, earlier uh, on in the webinar. So. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you today. Thank you, thank you for uh, coming in for the webinar. Thank you, thank you to Shark Indicators for having me on board. Thanks, Ty. Thanks, everybody. And um, I uh, enjoy the opportunity to explore these things. When I, when I do uh, these kinds of things, guys, I learn as much as you do because I have to think exactly. Now, of course, I've been doing this for a million years, so I don't learn as much as I used to, but I have to make sure that what I'm presenting to you is absolutely crystal clear, and um, and so I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to do this with you and for you to be a part of it and for me to be a part of it too. So thank you, thank you. Hey Rob, thanks and I'll for uh, back over to you, Ty. Thank you. Yep. Hey Rob, thank you for uh, coming on today, man. Um, it's yeah, been thank you for having me, man. All. And uh, guys, we're going to be uh, sending out the recording tomorrow. Um, per usual, so just uh, look in your inbox for that. And uh, thanks for coming, guys. Stay trading.